It's a maple syrup time. And we got a lot of snow. So I'm wearing my snowshoes. I walked through here yesterday in my boots, but I think the snowshoes are going to make it a lot better. I can just barely get in here. I don't know if you can see, but these green buckets here are what I can collect my sap in. I was here ten minutes ago and pre-tapped these trees. So what I do is I use the old-fashioned metal spoils, or whatever they're called. Put them in like that. And then when I'm done, as you can see, what I do is I plug them. I put a I put a plug in the hole at the end of the year. Don't know whether they should or shouldn't, but been doing it for years. You know, so that's always a trick with these things. It's not build it. I didn't build deep enough. I can not try that. It isn't the size of the hole; it's the depth. What happens is these things will bottom out, and if you can't get them in far enough so they're really tight, there you go. They're not strong enough to hold the. Not strong enough to hold the pail and it fills up with sap. So these things hold, well, 10 pounds is a gallon. These things hold close to two gallons. So we talk about having to hang on to 20 pounds. Alright, well we got two more trees to tap here in the bush. Spring has come fast and furious. Sap itself started late, but I think the season's going to be short. Two weeks ago, there was a foot, almost a foot of snow here. Well, you see this, <coughs> this ice here was in that bucket. And that's a trick that I was told by a professional syrup guy that when you get ice on top of your pockets, he says throw it away because it's a higher concentration of water than anywhere else. And that's uh, one way, one way to improve your yield. I mean, they say that, uh, Maple syrup is between 40 and 50 to 1. Well, I've been throwing that ice off of here for years. There's hardly any ice this year at all. It just hasn't been cold. We had 18 degrees Celsius because it's been warmer so far this season. I expect my yield won't be as high as it's been. I, I haven't seen between 25 and 30 to 1 actually the last two or three years I've been astonished but again I, I contributed to the fact that all that ice that builds on the top of my pails I throw it off and some mornings when it's cold it's it's an inch and a half to two inches thick
Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Good blaze in there. Try and close the door. Get that draft off. Pretty hard to do in the hippo surf with glasses on. perfectly flat on the bottom. So that's why I put these weights on here. Once I get this boiled down so that there's less than an inch in here, probably about a half an inch, I transfer that out of the big pan into here and then I'll finish that, boil the rest of that down with the propane. But uh, compared to other years, I think this is definitely going better and faster. Uh, the wood is just the wood is just giving me a. Uh, it's not always boiling hard because you got to keep you got to keep up with the fire, and uh, it's a little more work because the firebox isn't all that large. So every half an hour or so, you got to you got to put wood in it. Whereas when I use the propane, I could turn it on and go away for two or three hours and never have to worry about this thing but I like the idea of uh, I like the idea of it being quicker and I haven't used too much wood I had about what I'd call half a cord of firewood here and so far I've hardly used any I think I've probably thrown in 25 or Mind you, the stove was full of wood when I started, and I've thrown in another 25 or 30 sticks. Nothing too large. Stuff like this, one inch, two inch, three inches in diameter, I think works the best in there. Small, smaller pieces of wood, crisscross them in a mess. Uh, you know, a random pattern in there, uh, so they get lots of air. Keep lots of air between the blocks so that they. Uh, they burn best. We'll tune back in when it's time to uh, to drain that tank, transfer it to the to the finishing pot, and uh, we'll go through that process. Okay, so the syrup is definitely ready to be transferred out of there now. This is going to be tricky because I got a fire going hot underneath, and I got to lift that thing up a bit and get the. Uh, Surf to come to the front so I can get it out of this tap. down. And now we're going to need it all our metal I have in there. Put this back across the top. There we go. Okay. Possibly two liters. And I think that'll finish down to about one liter. I got a liter and a half there of fancy bottles. I'll be surprised if I get more than this one. Only time will tell. Almost two o'clock. So I've been at this since 10.30, so we're less than three and a half hours in. 
to this point. And I still got lots of wood left. I'm going to be doing this again next weekend. And what happened is it was so warm here last week I had 45 liters of sap go bad. I had it sipping out back behind the house in those greens. I've done that for years but usually it is freezing. This year it's been so warm that uh, I was pouring it out of those green jugs and it was coming out like syrup. Clear syrup. So it the sugar content in it and the heat, I guess it started to... I've never seen that before. It turned into fermented or exactly what happened, I don't know. But um, I've got one jug collected today and it's... I brought it back here so it won't be in the sunlight. And uh, it's colder today, it's like zero. It's zero or plus one. I don't know if there's enough light here to catch this, but as the sap boils down into syrup and gets rid of more and more water, you hit what's called the flash point. And what happens is, if you can see it here, it's boiling around the sides of the pot because that's the hottest point. And then all of a sudden, it'll just start coming right up out of the pot. That's called the flash point. And if you don't stop it, it'll boil right over. So I want to try and capture that. I hope I can. And uh, what we do, there's a commercial product you can use to arrest that. But uh, what I do is I just put in a dab of margarine. So let's see if we can capture that. I think we're getting pretty close to it in about probably in five or ten minutes that's going to happen. Okay we've hit the flash point. You see the way that see the way that's coming up in the pan? I'm going to get the heat off. So we were at the flash point and I put the dab of margarine in and it will stay it should stay calm after that. Now Flashpoint is not the end point. That is just a critical point in the, in the stage of making maple syrup. The critical point now is to get the temperature to rise up to almost 220 degrees. 219 is what they say. So our maple syrup is done. 219 to 220 degrees. That's it. That's the magic number. So let's get the heat off and let's get it poured into the bottle. Call it a day. My Dram Beauty bottle, funnel, cheese cloth, and our syrup. As I say I think we'll be lucky to get a whole liter. But we get what we get. Well, that went all right. I've got yeah, three, at least three quarters, maybe a little more than that, of a liter. Out of about, I'd say that, I think that was around 45 liters of sap I put in there. So it's definitely a lower yield than I've been getting. So one thing about maple syrup time here that an advantage for me is in the springtime we have to we have sump pumps running and they pump water out of the house which is a pain in the butt but uh, when it comes time to clean in syrup pans you might as well take a pain in the butt problem and turn it into a pain a non pain in the butt solution so I just let that water run in there for I'll let it run in there all week and it'll flush that pan right out. 
So the, the drain's open in the bottom, but it can't keep up to the amount of the water coming in. This thing will fill up and drain out and fill up and drain out. And uh, I'll hardly have to do a thing. There's a little bit of mark right there. And some of the sap may have burned to the bottom, but a week from now, may never know that was there. Nice clean water coming out of the ground from under my house, cleaning out that pan. It'll be perfect. That's the kind of stuff I like.